Maybe the the main this one takes the most of the people. Maybe the main You mean like the main person like the yeah, main that main person. person. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. How are you all doing? It's wonderful to see your bright, shining faces on this Sunday morning. I see a lot of people wearing red out there. That is very strange, very strange indeed. But never mind that. Let's continue with our worship this morning. 
Well, we're going to invite everyone to stand as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and, and by, by what, what we have left undone. We have, we have not, not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our heart. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Two, three, four. God is a good, good God. Yeah. 
Let us prepare our hearts and minds this morning for our scripture readings as we invite our reader to come forward. Everybody say, not it. <laughs> not it. <laughs> Who is our scripture? Pearl, Pearl is our scripture reader this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Pearl. You're welcome. Our sight reads well. The first reading today is from Isaiah 58 in verses 9b to 14. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer you. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interest on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight in the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the month of the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm the scripture reading is from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, 
slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Halle, halle, halle. Please stand. Luna. Halle, halle, halle. Today's Gospel reading is from the book of Luke, beginning in the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each one of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame. And the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. Please be seated. I read recently that more writers, journalists, and novelists are in prison today around the world than ever before. There has been an increasing worldwide phenomenon of cracking down on free speech. This has been going on for quite some time in different places around the world. I think of Mexico in particular, where many, many journalists investigating crimes of the cartels and the connection and the corruption between government and the cartels have wound up being found dead or put in prison. Over and over again, this has happened. Just recently, I'm sure you heard about Salman Rushdie, who was a free speech advocate and was stabbed repeatedly when he was about to give a presentation on free speech. He was attacked. Currently, in our own country, we're dealing with how to handle or how to regulate free speech. What are people allowed to say and what not to say? What can journalists say and do? I know that a lack of free speech is a sign of authoritarianism. Here we find in our Gospels that the religious leaders are portrayed as authoritarian. We see that in our story today. They have come to control the Sabbath day. What God had created for the good of humankind and all of creation has become a means to control others by regulating it. What was supposed to give life has been limited, has been closed off and used for that control. There is always this hypocrisy in authoritarian leaders. Do as I say and not as I do. I think that was pretty evident to all of us during the, the pandemic time when we were all on lockdown, but we saw many of our political leaders out there 
having dinners and have doing all the things that they were telling us not to do. There was a big scandal in the United Kingdom, right? Where the, uh, the leadership there, the political leadership, were having parties, drinking together, hanging out. Meanwhile, somebody could have gone to jail for doing the same thing as a regular person. And here we see in our reading from the gospel, these leaders who would do something for their own benefit on the Sabbath day, such as just taking their livestock to drink water, what they might consider as work, but they're willing to do something like that on the Sabbath day to help out their own livestock, their own property, their own lives. But here they would stop a woman from being healed on the Sabbath day. It just doesn't make any sense. None of it makes any sense. We can go back and we can look at the origins of the Sabbath day, where it comes from. It doesn't really give an exact definition of what work is considered to be. So therefore, it's been a matter of interpretation over thousands of years. What exactly is work? on the Sabbath day? What would we actually be allowed to do and not allowed to do? What we do know, that one of the, the main points of the Sabbath day was to stop the exploitation of people. And not only just people, to stop the exploitation even of animals, of livestock, and even the land. Even the animals that one owned were not supposed to do any work on the Sabbath day. And there was a regulation that every seven years, a field was supposed to lie fallow so that it wouldn't get overused and the nutrients be depleted from the land so it had time to rest and heal. Really, all of creation was supposed to benefit from the Sabbath day. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, we learn that the people were to remember that they had been slaves in Egypt. The Lord had brought them out with power and therefore commanded them to keep the Sabbath day. Why are those two connected together? To remember that they had been slaves and to remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. What does somebody do when they own slaves in general? What happens to the slaves in a society? Do they get a day off, you think? Well, they don't have any rights, so they don't really have the right to a Sabbath day or a day of rest. So we can imagine that when they were in Egypt, they were working day in and day out, nonstop, working, 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 working the whole time. We can look back on our history in the United States of slavery as well. And they were indeed forced to work on Sundays, maybe not the whole day. Oftentimes they would give them half of the Sunday. So they would have to go out, work in the morning and to the end of the afternoon and then they would have the rest of the day off but they were still forced to work on the Sabbath day for Christians. People who are vulnerable and exploited in society are often forced to work and to work and to work just to make ends meet. That's why this, this commandment was not just for the regular people, but it was for the landowners, the rich and the wealthy, so that they wouldn't force their workers to be on the job every single day of the week. Sabbath is a time of rest, a time of healing, a time of recovery. Just like when we sleep, right? What happens when we sleep? Our muscles recover, they regenerate, we're able to heal our bodies. Sabbath is like that for every aspect of our lives. We need to have breaks in order to rest and recover. But Sabbath is also about liberation from oppression. During the Sabbath day, we take a break from our everyday lives. We go against the grain of society. In society, there is no time for God there is no time for rest. We must be work, working, working, working constantly throughout our days. By celebrating and keeping the Sabbath day holy, we're going against that cultural push upon us 
and taking a time separate because it's not just whatever we want to do either on the, Sabbath, on the Sabbath day. It is a time that's supposed to be devoted to God, to focus on God, and a time also to be able to do good for others. We can come to church on that day. We can be a part of our tradition, a part of our rituals, but that will mean little without righteousness in our hearts and justice in our communities. How are the vulnerable people in our society given a chance to rest and be free in our day and age? How can we work to take away the yoke of economic exploitation so that all can experience what the Sabbath is supposed to offer? This is a real issue. This is a real issue for us it's a real issue for fellow Lutherans in our synod and around the country as well. As many of you know, I worked previous to coming here for a church that had many Spanish-speaking members as a part of it. And one thing I learned about working with them was that many in the Spanish-speaking community would not take a day off. They did not see that they had the ability to do so. At least, at least one member of the family, whether the husband or wife, had to be working every single day of the week. It was something that they felt they needed to do and probably did need to do just in order to be able to make ends meet. It's one reason that we started a bilingual retreat many years ago in order to bring people out of their normal environment, out of the city life, get out into the mountains in one of our Lutheran camps in the area, and just spend some time. We do it over Labor Day weekend. It's symbolic of this idea that all of us need to take time for Sabbath, need to take time for rest. And so we invite families to come, bilingual families, and people who are just interested in learning more about Hispanic culture and the language. We have time for worship together. We have time for reflection and Bible study, but also just time to rest, to enjoy the natural world that God has created, and spend time in fellowship with fellow Christians and with our families and friends. This happens every year. I'd love for, if you're interested to be a part of it, just let me know. It happens every Labor Day weekend. I would love for more people to be a part of this experience. But they felt like they needed to work, work, work. They weren't taking time for family vacations. And while I understand that, that need that they had, the Sabbath day is still valid for each and every one of us Rest and recovery is needed for each and every one of us. And maybe you're not in that situation. Maybe you don't have the need to work every single day of the week, but maybe you still do. Maybe you just can't help yourself from feeling like you need to get ahead, so you need to work and work and work more every single day of your life. This is also a message for you. And I would even, I don't know if they're watching right now, but I would even put my parents into this category. I have a, my mom is a pastor and my dad is a lawyer. So you can see, they like to work, 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 pastoring and lawyering all the time. I remember, not to call my dad out too much, but I remember he would say, today you're going to hang out with dad. We're going to have a good time, maybe Saturday, Sunday, or both days. And what would we do? We would go to his office <laughs> so that he could get some extra work done. And yes, he would take, we would go play basketball and do other stuff, but we would spend time at the office because he just needed to get that trial ready for that week. There's just always something that needed to be done. We might find ourselves in those same shoes. That's why God's commandment is for everyone, for rich and poor alike that we can all find recovery and healing to be able to focus on God and take time out of our days to focus on others as well, to do good for our communities. All of that and this commandment is there so that the rich in our society will not exploit 
the laborers and the people, that they will provide sufficient days for rest and sufficient monetary income so that they are able to take that time of rest. That is what we learn from this Sabbath day. In the past, in the Old Testament, the Israelites, when they were out in the desert, they gathered around God's mountain in the desert, but they were gathered in fear and trembling because God said, if you touch that mountain without being allowed to do so, you will die. They gathered around the glory of God in fear and trembling of death. But we have a little different story. We gather around God as well, but not in fear and not in trembling of death. We gather around God in gratefulness for what Christ has done for us. And we receive a new kingdom, one that cannot be felt or touched with our hands, one that cannot be shaken and cannot be moved by anything. And therefore, there is no longer any fear of death. So we are empowered to go out into the world with no fear in our hearts to be able to help all people who are in need. The authoritarian religious leaders of Jesus' day kept the populace in check with fear. Jesus takes away the fear, bringing healing, bringing new life to us. Jesus brings liberation and freedom. The Sabbath is for the people and not the other way around. The Sabbath is so that humanity and all the earth actually will be able to thrive in this existence. So let's relearn what the Sabbath means and let us thrive together with all people. Let us thrive with all of God's amazing creation. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. Let's sing of that thriving together. Here in this worn and weary land where many a dream has died Like a tree planted by the water we never will run dry So living water flowing through God we thirst for more of you Fill our hearts and flood our souls with one desire just to know you and to make you known, we lift your name on high. Shine like the sun, make darkness run and hide. We know we were made for so much more than all.
Please join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated or uh, kneel for the prayer. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to the whole people of God. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You satisfy the needs of all creatures. Protect the habitats of fish and birds. Repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster that all creation may thrive. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizations to restore the places affected by violence, poverty, and inequality. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You call us to delight in the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Generations, bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. We especially are reminded of Sarah Jimenez, we give you thanks for her amazing, beautiful life, God. We give you thanks that she is now resting with you, with all the saints. We ask that you would bring comfort and peace to all who mourn this tragic loss, especially her family, her sons, and her friends, and our church community here. God, support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Merciful God, receive, receive our, prayer. our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. 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 May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with you. Let's share a sign of that peace with one another.
stand as you're able. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll invite you to come forward down the middle. We will be communing this morning by means of intinction. However, if you're not comfortable to come forward for intinction, our wonderful ushers in the back there do have the little communion kits. You can simply ask them for one of those as they're making their way back, and they will provide you with that so you can have communion on your own individual terms. Welcome everybody to come forward. This table is open to all. This is a table of God's mercy and love. So come forward, for all is ready.
May the body and blood of Jesus Christ keep you in God's grace and strengthen you into life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, we have some announcements for you this morning. First of all, I want to say thank you to family and friends of Cynthia Heidemann for the beautiful flowers on the altar. Thank you so much in celebration of her beautiful life. I did also, uh, you may have received the email or in the prayers heard that Sarah Jimenez did pass away this week on Thursday at about one o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, she was a beautiful person. It was not really expected. So it is definitely feeling a very uh, tragic loss for her family and friends. So I invite you to keep her family in your prayers and we will let you know when we have more information about when we'll have a memorial service for her here. Uh, she was involved in so many aspects of the congregation for so long, so she will, be, she will be greatly missed here in our congregation. And our love goes out to her family and to all who knew her and, and uh, held her close. Some other announcements for you this morning as well. Uh, rally day is coming up. There is our sign-ups as you are leaving. So make sure you get signed up. We will be providing food, but the, we're doing sign-ups for sides and desserts. So I think I got that right. I don't, is Greta here? Greta, no, she's the one, she's kind of our, she's being our leader for that. But it will be on the 11th of September. So come to worship. And then right after that, we're gonna have rally day. It's, it's a carnival theme. So there's gonna be lots of games to play, lots of fun stuff for the kids and everybody along with the food. So we also wanna invite you to invite a friend. Bring somebody with you that day so they can learn all about the wonderful ministries that we have here at the congregation. So they can maybe get excited about what's going on at St. Paul Lutheran Church as well. So that will be on the 11th. We'll be starting a new Christian education time every Sunday starting on the 18th at 8 a.m. in the morning. We'll be uh, studying through the Augsburg Confession, which is kind of the original document of what Lutherans believe. We'll see how it made sense back in its day and maybe how we can apply it to our lives today as well. So come join every 8, it's 8 to 9 a.m. starting the 18th of September. Ladies' Night Out is on the 30th of September. There is also a sign-up sheet for that as you are leaving. It's at Vicki McCarthy's house, so please sign up and be a part of that fun event. Look Who's Dancing is coming up, and our very own Nick Preston right in the back there is going to be the dancer, so we got to support him. Yes, indeed. We need to support Nick in this, so we're going to be collecting donations for him. You can collect all your spare change or those, those spare $100 bills that I know you have lying around. Just collect those, build them up, and then donate them. Just make it rain on Nick over here um, so he can be the highest earner of all time for Look Who's Dancing. All right, any other announcements? There is something, I noticed that a lot of you are wearing red, and I can't quite figure out who would, I, I don't even know why I'm wearing red. Why, it's supposed to be green today. You guys even have red on as well. What could it possibly be that we, you know Kathleen? All right, let us know, why are we wearing red this morning? I almost wore red this morning. It's being delivered uh, later on today from Amazon. It was supposed to be yesterday. <laughs> you can, do you have like a red pin or something? You got I have a little red pin. That's, that's, that's all I got. Oh, okay. Yep. Got it. 
We are celebrating Chris today. I'm gonna get out of the way here. So I would like to invite Chris to come up and but I don't think anybody knows what it looked like unless I'm behind the piano. <laughs> Should I take a microphone just in case? 